When you look at Jacksonville, who were some of the guys offensively uh, that jump out? So ETN's the big one, obviously. I think that they're going to, whether Lawrence is there or not, they run a lot of their explosive plays through him and through the run game. You know, he's somebody who he can beat you between the tackles. He's got the speed to get the sideline. He can give you those explosive plays. He's one of the best in the NFL at it. And then he can be used very well as a receiver too. So I think they'll fo their focus their offense through him, especially – with Christian Kirk out now. And that was kind of a strange situation too. You know, he catches his first pass in that Monday night game and you know, he's kind of holding his groin. And all of a sudden now he's got to have core surgery and he's going to be out for probably two months now at this point. So with him now out of the lineup, of course, Calvin Ridley is their go-to wide receiver, but outside of him, Parker Washington is a guy that a lot of people got to know for the first time this past Monday night during Monday night football. And he's somebody who I liked a lot when he was coming out of the draft um, a couple of years ago. So he's somebody who, okay, maybe not the most athletic guy in the world, but really nice hands catcher, reliable guy when the ball is coming his way. And he's just a determined football player when it comes to those yards after catch. So you saw them be willing to get the ball in his hands a little bit. And I think that he is going to continue to be a, a part of that offense with Kirk now out. Yeah. The, the other guy that, comes to mind is, is the tight end and he's kind of a, a hybrid almost in, in Evan Ingram. He, you know, mm -hmm. finally found the end zone for the first time, but he has been a weapon uh, for them offensively. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. Now his season, you know, he's, it, it, it's been a little up and down, right? It's a little hot and cold. And so you're not sure whether you're getting a, a big impactful Evan Ingram game or not, but there's no doubt about it when they get him involved much tougher team to defend you know you've got to defend a lot more blades of grass if you will when he is somebody who's a consistent threat and so they will certainly try to get him involved in in the offense as early as they can so josh allen one of the top sack leaders he kind of jumps off the page defensively what are some areas you looked at what the bengals were able to do that interior defensive line have they struggled all year they Cincinnati was winning the battle in, in the middle. You know, the, the guards and centers were kind of recreating the line of scrimmage, if you will. Yeah, and I think that that's an issue for both uh, both lines for the Jags. It's that interior part. The interior defensive line for them and that defensive side of the football, you mentioned it. Um, the Bengals were able to control that pretty well. Um, they, were, they weren't getting a lot of pressure up front. It was basically Josh Allen getting pressure or pressure wasn't happening unless they were bringing some extra guys in the blitz. So that's been an issue for the Jags, I would say, over the last couple of weeks. And it's something that's kind of manifesting into a offseason need for them that people are going to start to talk about. But then on the flip side, too, the offensive trenches, and specifically the interior. So if you just look at the overall offensive line for Jacksonville, they're 20th in, in overall PFF grade. But if you just take the guards in the center, they're 28th in the league in, in total PFF grade. So that is an area where... Cleveland really could. You mentioned some of those veteran interior defenders that they've got. Like that's an area where they can really generate some pressure because that's been a weak spot along the offensive line. So especially if Trevor Lawrence isn't as mobile as he usually is, that could be an area that really Cleveland plays to their advantage with how quickly they can get pressure on the inside. Is that kind of the the thing that you think is the biggest matchup there? What's the biggest matchup that, you know, the, the Browns need to win in order to come away with a much needed win in this game? Yeah, I, I, again, that would be what I would echo is you got to be able to run the ball in between the tackles. And I think they'll have the ability to do that. You know, you can make the game as slow as you want to. And certainly when you're playing um, a, a team like Jacksonville, you want to be able to control the ball as much as possible. Um, certainly if Lawrence is playing. But then that big key matchup for me personally would have been what the Browns can do on the interior and the interior pressure that they can bring, some A-gap blitzes, things like that. You know, Usu Kormo could be a guy who's used very advantageously with that as well because he can get a lot of pressure up the middle. It's just been a struggle for Jacksonville. And Jacksonville might not even have uh, Walker Little, who missed the second day of practice today. And so if you got to rotate, maybe Ezra Cleveland out to left tackle, that means another new guy in the interior. So that could mean a big Miles Garrett game if they're going to line him up against uh, a Cleveland who might be on the air, whoever's going to play left tackle for him. So they have the opportunity to dominate that side of the line of scrimmage and continue to get pressure. And that's going to be uh, Cleveland's plan to winning this one.